in three, two, one. Just how realistic are those movie scenes that depict huge propane tank fireball explosions when they get shot with a bullet? My money's on their fake, but my money's also on that we can make it happen. Yeah, I'm sure we can make some fireballs today and capture it in glorious high speed. Welcome back to Ballistic High Speed. Okay, since the primary question is whether or not, as John Wick's rocking around with his pit viper, if he were to shoot a bad guy's propane tank, would it actually explode? If it doesn't, what does it take? We have some incendiary 556, a spotter 65 Creedmoor, two types of dragon's breath. You've seen the blue tip incendiary 50 cal in our tungsten Q episode. You mentioned John Wick, dragon's breath is also a good one it to is, feature. It is also in there. If none of that works, we got some road flares or I'll start a fire. Like we're gonna make this work. And since we're making a fire, of course we brought a fire extinguisher. Because? Safety first, science second. It's cold out. Let's see if we can make some fireballs. Okay. We've got the nine millimeter versus a one pound tank. So this should have approximately a quarter gallon of propane inside of it. Will it be outside of it soon? Let's find out. All right, let's see if the movies get this right or wrong. Whoa. <laughs> That was pretty cool. It didn't go very far. No, it really didn't. And as we expected, no fireball. No fireball. Oh, wow. sweet. Fairly slowed down. Yeah. I'm curious how thick the walls of that tank even are. If it went through that, e oh, look at the patterns. You said a quarter gallon of propane? Roughly, yeah. Stored at such a high pressure that it's in liquid form. But as soon as it gets into atmosphere, it's immediately turning to gas, vapor. Problem is we don't have a flame source. Right. And I think most of you guys knew this. It's pretty much a myth that if you just shoot a normal tank with a regular bullet, you're not gonna get a fireball without some other external ignition source. There's so much in there. All right, so as we can see, zero problems getting through there. The only problem with it was no spark. So, some Looney Tunes looking stuff. <laughs> we put a road flare directly on the tank. That will be lit for a good flame source. And then we're gonna put another one on the ground here because we noticed that it kind of congregated like right in here. Between the two, we'll at least get a fireball this time, but we'll know if we can just put the road flare on there or if we need it down there or if we need it on both. And one in the air. And one in the air. All right, Dr. <laughs> Seuss, calm down. <laughs> All right, enough yapping. Let's get a fireball. Let's do it. Let's see if we can fix what the movies don't do. Whoa! <laughs> Holy smokes! <laughs> I think that was the tank that just flew. Well, I gotta make sure it's not burning my yard down. Scrape the bottle. So that's why it turned into a rocket. Okay. <laughs> that plastic cup. Oh, is yeah. I forgot that was on there. Look at how much is coming out. But not enough air in there yet or something. But there's flames starting here. Whoa. I don't think it needed the backup flare. I don't think so. So now that we've made ourselves a nice little rocket ship, we're going to see, can this round, this is a 6.5 Creedmoor with a spotter tracer in it, hitting the tank brings enough heat to ignite it without cheating. Right. <laughs> I'm curious if we'll see sparks on impact or if it's gonna be carrying sparks through it. I have no idea. If this doesn't work, I have high confidence the next ones. And if those ones don't, I'll go back to the flares. Yeah. We're blowing these things Either up. Either way, we got more fireballs coming your way. Yeah, I'm blowing them up. All right, let's see if Tracer alone can set this off. You good? Yep. All right. I'm gonna say no. Okay, no fireball. The movies are liars. Although frankly, not very surprised. They have entire special effects departments for a reason. Ooh, you can hear it sizzling. Yeah. Whoa, it's <laughs> boiling. So cool. Very frosty. Man, that is going so fast. It, yeah, it doesn't care. care. Oh, there were sparks. A lot of sparks. Oh, man. 
but the sparks are like an order of magnitude faster than the propane. That 6.5 is out the other side and almost to the wall before the propane's coming out of the canister. <laughs> Whoa! Man, that, I don't even think it slowed down. Look at the sparks going, are those underneath the label? Oh, I think they are. <laughs> yeah, the sparks just left before. I mean, there's a few hanging around kind of nearby, but the vapor needs more time to get to stoichiometric. Yeah. There's so much vapor that needs to come out. <laughs> All right, well, I say we, we throw more sparks at it. Do a, little, do a little dragon's breath. Yeah. If you've been around for a while, you've seen us use dragon's breath on the channel, but it's got bird shot and we've got new stuff. So this is the Hellfire from Phoenix Rising. Uh, they, send, they send us unique stuff quite often, really. When we need a source of fire, I feel like Hellfire is as good as it gets. <laughs> yes. So this is a three inch mag 12 gauge. It burns at 5,610 degrees. Plus it has six double lot hardened buckshot. Oh God. And right on the box, it says much more extreme than Dragon's Breath. Much more extreme. So. With any luck, this buckshot tears this thing, gets that vapor out in the open so that when the incendiary comes through, we ignite this thing. The buckshot should outpace the sparks. Yeah. So the sparks should come a little later, hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see. Here we go. High speed ready. All right. Hellfire. Hellfire. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. Well, we caught the table on fire. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That is what I wanted. Nice. Got it in slow-mo too. Got one. Just, just the one. But hey, that's why they put six of them in there. So that helps get sparked right where we want it. Right. Oh yeah, because flame started there. It just keeps going. And then before wow. you know it. <laughs> Whoa. Whole screen on fire. No way. It's kind of cool though, like it's engulfed in flame and it's you can see how far it still takes for it to hit that. Yeah. Whoa, right here. So you can see as it's turning into the flames, it's too rich and it's pushing yeah. away the flames. That's cool. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Oh, you can see it pushing the flames around in there. That looks like a Hollywood fireball right there. I don't know about a 20 pound tank. <laughs> we might want to stop at five. <laughs> we might want to. Now that we've got some fireballs under our belt, we're going to go do another experiment. So we're going to shoot a 5.56 incendiary. Ooh. It ignites on target and it says it burns at 3000 plus degrees. Yeah. So that should be enough. We'll have the heat. The question is, does it last long enough? Correct. If you follow the channel for a while, you'll notice that the 223 Wild has gotten yet another makeover. The only bad looking part on it is the one that I did. So <laughs> that hurts my feelings, but so, hey, it's getting built up. It's getting built up thanks to Wooks. They have these beautiful furnitures for rifles. And they helped us do our shotgun up. It's all real wood, beautiful manufacturing. They are in North Carolina. It says gear your heirs will fight over. And I believe it because it actually makes me want to buy like a nice rifle. So big shout out to Wooks. Go check them out. They hook us up with an affiliate link. So if you do want to get some of this beautiful stuff, you can get 10% off and it helps the channel. And you might notice that there's a big old fancy looking optic on there. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Let's see if you can just use an incendiary to set off a tank. And if not, we're still going to give you some fireballs later. Oh yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Oh, it did work. Oh, wow. It did work. That is freaking sweet. Not the craziest fireball, but it worked. I had my doubts. 
I like being proven wrong on that. That's freaking sweet. There's a flash. Quite a flash. Whoa. Dang. There's not many sparks left though. Dang. It looks like a muzzle flare. So the incendiary itself is definitely not what set it off. No. Because it looks like the propane is actually helping to extinguish it. It is finally time to tell you about the DNT Optics. It is a multi-spectral. You don't have to choose between thermal or night vision. You get both simultaneously. It utilizes a picture in picture. So I was watching coyotes the other night. I've got night vision in the small one and then thermal on the big one. And then if I wanted to switch it, it is as simple as a push of a button and it switches to night vision's your main and your thermal goes into the secondary. It looks, so it looks like a spider. All these. I uh, know. This one right here is a built in IR illuminator. You can actually focus it. It has five different power levels for battery conservation. It can run off of an external battery pack and they put a Pictini rail there so you can actually just mount the pack there. The software has a ballistic calculator. You can store 26 different bullet datas. The grain, the weight of them, the barrel length, barrel twist rate. It utilizes everything in there with the built-in rangefinder to tell you exactly where you need to be shooting. It takes all the guesswork out of it so you can get good, healthy, ethical shots if you're using it for animal harvesting. It has recoil activated recording. So like our high-speed cameras, it's always saving to RAM kind of, and then upon that recoil, that six seconds prior, all starts recording. While you're checking it out, for the 999, they do have one of a higher resolution. It will bump up in uh, the price point. Shout out to DNT Optics for sponsoring this episode. Now go check these out on their website. As you can tell, Bryce has some extra photonage going on here. Yep. We're really about to ramp up the game. We're gonna step it up to the blue tip 50 cal. If you haven't seen these before, uh, you can check out our tungsten cube video that's incendiary that's been ripping trend. It's on hardcore steroids. <laughs> it's meant to go through the cockpit of an airplane and just set everything on fire. We've got the Ransom International Ballistic Forensic Testing Machine. We got to come up with an acronym for that. That is a that's a whole thing. I think I spelled out the acronym at one point and it was just really lame. It didn't make any sense. Ah, dang like it. you can't really say it. I retrofitted an electromagnetic actuator. It can't do anything until I go probably 250 feet back behind that wall, plug it in, pulls the trigger, and then do we see what we see? <laughs> and if we didn't say it before, that's a five pound canister over I don't there. think I did. Yeah. yeah, Adam messed that up. Yep. Well, we're saying it right now. Yep. Do we think it'll do a fireball or do you think it'll be too much propane, too rich? Oh, I think it's gonna fireball. Oh yeah. Okay. Because I think the 50 cal is gonna rip that thing wide open. Well, it's a good thing we can be very far away for this. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's go set it up. All right. Loading the blue tip 50 cal. Weapons hot. I say again, weapons hot. Ready? All right. In three, two, one. Oh my gosh. Holy crap. <laughs> Fire extinguisher, go, go, go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, I think definitively we're not doing a 20 pound. No. Whoa. We forced it out of the nozzle. Oh, I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that. No. <laughs> and there was so much hydrostatic shock shoving down, we splintered the wood. Look at it just gushing out of it. Look how big that hole is. It's like a fire hydrant. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at it just dancing. It's up against the wall, pinned there, spinning, and then it finally comes Dang. Down. That's a lot of flame. There's no part of this frame that doesn't have flame in it. This 
So this is one of those things where different parts of the action are much better with different frame rates and different yeah. angles. Uh, yeah, five pounds is enough. <laughs> Look, it's still it's, smoking. It's on fire. It's been like 10 minutes and it's still smoldering. It's like all blackened. This whole wall is charred. I don't know how well it picks up on camera. All this grass is done. <laughs> yeah. Something we saw in the high speed, it forced vapor out of the fill nozzle and unscrewed it. We broke about everything you could break on it. Oh my <laughs> God. I can see right through it. There's a cool lens flare happening too. Wow, that's pretty thick. I think it goes without saying, let's not do a 20 pound or 15 no, pound. No, nope. If enough people subscribe, I'll be able to afford a bigger range than we can. <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah, from the hydrostatic shock. Dang. You think they'll fill this for me? <laughs> I'm pretty certain that fireball came out to like here. Like it was- I think so. So from one pound to five pound, felt like it was five times bigger. Yeah, that was- So to do a 20 pound, to quadruple what we just did, hell no. Not, not We're here. We're not doing that. Not here. If you want to see the 20 pounds, say so, and we might do it down in Texas. 100,000 likes on this video alone. You have to do it in 10 minutes though. Oh, wow. Okay, go. We always do a little special shot for our Patreon members. We're just gonna see what happens when a standard 50 cal goes all the way up the tube on this little propane tank. So if you would like to see the results of that, hit the link to our Patreon. Thanks for watching that episode. That was a lot of really cinematic fireballs. We're gonna cut it there for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. One, five pound canister fireballs are way bigger than I thought they would be. Yes. Couldn't even get it in the frame of any of the cameras. The wife came out and said it shook the house, yeah. so. <laughs> There's an opportunity for a follow-up here. Uh, we're about to be headed down to Texas because all our friends are down there, but also it sucks to film in Indiana right now. It's like 30 degrees. So still potential to shoot these 15 to 20 pound canisters. We're not doing it here. No. It'll set the property <laughs> ablaze. <laughs> Episode wasn't supposed to just be about going crazy. It was about learning yeah, what does it exactly. take to ignite. And go check out sdi.edu. There'll be a link in the description below. This is a fun episode. Yeah. Way cooler than I thought it would be. And I've never seen this in proper high speed before. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. All right. <laughs>